Before we can go forward, our discussion must begin with a breakdown of the different types of jigs available uh, and some quick observations about each. There are really three main types of jigs uh, that you can buy, and each has a specific place and purpose in bass fishing. The first category of jigs are football jigs. These jigs are known for their wide and blunt football shaped jig heads. Uh, they run a little heavier than most other jigs, typically between half ounce and one ounce, with three quarter ounce being very popular. The reason why the jig head is shaped like a football is because you can crawl them easily over bare and gravel bottoms and they help the anglers um, uh, feel the bottom better. Now they've also been shown to not snag up as much in small rocks because of their wide and blunt head shape. It's a great jig for water deeper than 10 feet and when you want to cover water on structure like points and ledges. Now another jig design is what's called a grass jig and the notable difference is the jig head shape. It's more pointed and narrow and allows the jig to come through weeds and vegetation easier without getting covered in grass. That's really the only purpose and benefit to the grass jig. Its pointed jig head doesn't snag vegetation as easily. The last major category of jigs is the standard or often termed flipping jig. Uh, it's essentially an in-between, not too narrow, not too blunt jig design uh, that's versatile in many different kinds of cover. Um, its real strengths show when fishing wood cover, uh, be it laydowns, docks, and so on. Uh, it's best suited for heavy cover and is certainly the most used of the three categories of jigs. But let me just say that just because the flipping jig can be seen as more versatile, uh, that doesn't mean that it can or should be used in all circumstances. That's why grass and football jigs were invented. So for this video, we're only going to be focusing on the standard flipping jig. Uh, while many topics and discussions, be it uh, color selection or weed guards, uh, share similarities, um, the goal of this video is to become as specific as possible in the shortest amount of time. So any talk about grass jigs or football jigs will be left to another video, and you'll see that in the future. You know, one of the big changes we're witnessing right now in the jig industry is the availability of tungsten jigs. In years past, jigs were always poured with lead uh, because of its low cost and easy manufacturing. While most jigs on the market are still poured with lead jig heads, uh, many companies are beginning to offer a tungsten line. Uh, companies such as uh, True Tungsten, K-Tech, and even Bass Pro Shops XPS offers tungsten jigs. The real benefit to tungsten is twofold. One, since tungsten is much more dense than lead, uh, it can be much smaller for the same size weight. Uh, tungsten jig heads are typically 25 to 50 percent smaller than similarly weighted uh, lead jig heads, uh, so tungsten jigs often look more compact. The other major benefit is sensitivity. Uh, since it's a much more dense metal, uh, anglers can feel the lure hitting the bottom better and feel it coming into contact with uh, covering structure easier. So what's the downside? The downside is cost. Tungsten ain't cheap. And tungsten jigs are typically double in price what lead jigs are. Uh, the average lead jig probably costs two to three dollars. Uh, so to get a similar jig in tungsten, expect to pay five or six dollars per jig. That may not sound too bad, but jigs have heavy cover written all over them. And if you're not losing at least a couple a day, you're not fishing a jig correctly. Uh, so if you generally lose ten dollars of jigs per day, a switch to tungsten will make that twenty dollars or more. And this is really the reason why you haven't seen a quicker introduction of tungsten jigs into the market and why I haven't abandoned lead jigs just yet, but that may change in due time. The skirt plays two important roles. The biggest is obviously color, which we'll get to in a minute. The less known role it plays is water resistance. If you were to watch a 3 8 ounce jig fall from an underwater vantage point, you'd probably be surprised that it fell much slower than you thought. The skirt and the jig's trailer create water resistance, which slows the fall of the jig. Well, a lot of anglers know this, and they'll either use a thicker skirt, or they'll pluck out strands of the stock skirt to make the jig fall slower or faster. Uh, obviously, the more strands, the slower the fall. Well, you're probably wondering how often a situation comes up that requires one to pluck strands from the skirt or put on a thicker skirt. Well, one instance I'll pluck strands from the skirt is when power fishing docks in the summer. When I'm power fishing, I'm moving quickly, making long pitches to pilings, and only letting my jig complete its initial fall. 
If I don't get bit by that first fall, I'm reeling it back in for my next pitch. Since these bass are often real aggressive, I'll put on a jig trailer that has some flapping action, which will slow the jig down as those tails kick and vibrate. Um, now a half ounce jig is, is the perfect size, uh, but that flapping action jig trailer will slow it down. So to compensate, I'll simply pluck some strands out of the skirt and my jig will fall faster and will allow me to cover the water column quicker uh, as I go from dock to dock power fishing. Switching to a jig with a thick skirt to slow the fall is a lot less common, but a thick skirt can add more bulk and even give the jig a finesse look as it undulates more from the added strands. But in general, uh, it's a far less common to see a, a jig fisherman switch to a thicker skirt in the middle of the day. It's something I rarely concern myself with. Now when you're on the subject of skirts, a big chunk of that discussion will be centered around color selection. So let's set out some guidelines as to how you should be choosing the color of your jigs. Jig color selection should follow the same basic tenets that determine colors for other lures. And that is the forage, the water clarity, and the time of day. Now obviously if you know what the fish are feeding on, you can match your lure colors to that forage. But hardly is it ever that easy, especially if you're on a very diverse fishery or on a body of water that is entirely new to you. So that's where water clarity and uh, to a lesser extent the time of day can help guide you to a proper color selection. If the water is clear, you generally want to shy away from dark baits or baits that have a strong profile in those conditions. Now, if the water is clear, bass become very wary and are less easily fooled by unnatural looking baits. So your lighter natural shades will benefit you more. Uh, colors like uh, your light browns, watermelons, and green pumpkins uh, will be a much better choice for clear water conditions. Now the opposite is true in muddy or heavily stained water. You want to go a bit darker. Dark colors like blacks and dark browns are popular choices. And most jig skirts come with a few strands of complementing colors, usually in the form of like uh, oranges, greens, or purples. Um, they add a bit of realism and attraction to your skirt that would otherwise have a dull look if it were just one single color. Uh, a jig most notably resembles a crawfish, so those secondary skirt colors uh, add some crawfish flair to your jig. Now I should mention that the color black and blue is the most popular jig color sold in America. And it's really no wonder why, it is the most versatile color for all conditions. Any lightly to heavily stained water would be a good candidate for black and blue. But let me just say this because I think a lot of people really get hung up on color selection. And if you're fishing heavy enough cover, which is generally the case with jig fishing, um, as long as you nail down the proper shade, it probably doesn't matter too much what the exact colors are. Um, you know, stick with your most popular colors, your, your black and blues, your browns, your watermelons, your pumpkins. Um, your goal is to really nail down that shade. That's really the key part here. Now the time of day also plays a role in color selection. If it's dark out like it is in the morning or evenings, you want to fish darker colors. And uh, this can also be the case in very overcast days as well. Uh, if it's bright out and sunny during midday, uh, this favors lighter color jigs for clear stained water. White jigs are always the forgotten lore color, the most overlooked of all. But don't think that they aren't important. Uh, you should stock up on white jigs because at certain times of the year, uh, bass become really keyed into shad and other bay fish and swimming a white jig can be the ticket. This is a big tactic I use in the fall when bass are making their migrations to flats in the upper ends of creek arms. Um, swimming a white jig covers a lot of water and shows bass something different than the standard fare of spinner baits and buzz baits. If you've read fishing magazines or watched a TV show uh, about jigs, You've probably heard a tip. A new trend we're seeing this year is the use of living rubber skirts. Particularly, most people don't give it the attention it deserves, but the weed guard can spread be modified. Spread the weed guard out to the side and stretch the fibers out and kind of let them snap back into place. Before we begin our discussion on jig trailers, it's important to note that there are two different... Non-flapping trailer is the right choice, like these up here on top. Now, in the summer... And they are braid... And I favor float. weight balancing because I like my jig rods to have a little weight.